And then the first step before even gloves is putting on a, a hairnet. Right. Um, and the idea behind not having your gloves on is just so especially anyone with longer hair can make sure their, their hair is completely tucked in. <laughs> and you would then um, go ahead and put your first set of gloves on. Now these are gloves we're using for training. Um, the ones we have in the kit are quite longer. Or at least worth 25 bucks each. Mm -hmm. If you were built for them. Not these ones in particular, no. but the, the ones that are in the kit are actually quite a bit nicer. They're the ones that are in And then the next piece to go on are the boot covers. Hope now you're infected, you sat in the chair. <laughs> no, no, we're not worried about the germs you're bringing in, just the ones you're bringing out. Right. And we really have to think through a lot of this process uh, in terms of where it would take place. So we pull everything, pretty much we'd be doing this in the hallway, we're pulling everything out of our ante room because we know our ante room will be where we take, that will become infected when we take everything off. Right. So um, we have to pull pretty much everything out to the hallway, get set up out there, and then. Nice. Right, now it's time for the suit. And this is a level one suit. What we have in the kits are level four, so they're quite a bit more impermeable. These are the, these are not as good? No, these we're just using for training. Oh, exact same design, but the level four is you so quite a bit heavier. Quite a bit, yeah. It's more like an actual part material. Level four, is that the best? Yeah, the most impermeable. Yeah. It's the one mandated. These are extra large. And I think the that's other ones what we are. Have, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And if we, so you just wait on the hood because you have a few more things to put on. So the next step would be the N95. And we've got this design here, but really each nurse would look. We have laminated forms as to what you just recently passed on your, your fit test. And so every nurse would grab their appropriate mask. So that goes on your face. Sort of thing. You really see the bowl up. Yeah. You need a, so you need to have two people okay. doing okay. it. Okay. Good yeah. enough. And so now we would pinch the nose and make sure we have a good seal. Yeah. Okay. And then goggles were initially mandated. Mandated, and then they became optional. I think for, for the idea that some people would wear glasses and, and feel comfortable just behind the face shield, but most of us in the training have said we would take that extra step, that extra measure, and put the, um, the goggles on. Okay, and now you're pulling your hood up. making sure there's yeah there's no holes or areas. You put a face shield on. Yeah. <laughs> and then a last set of gloves. And the idea is these ones would be under under your suit and these ones would go over. Oh, it's a large problem, but... Okay, that's a lot of work for one patient who doesn't even necessarily have it. Yep, exactly. Yeah. And, don't, and the other thing is, too, is that you would have two nurses 
plus potentially your physician that's now out of service too because they would have to be in the hazmat suit. So we have developed a whole process that we, you know, would be able to, we'd call our second physician on call and we also have a call out, a fan out for an emergency nurse because then Something we're going to need emergency right. nurses, right? right? Because it's taken out, we only are staffing, particularly if they came on a night, we have two people on nights. Right. So, so if that you've happened got, at night, you've got two in use and that's right. It shuts it shuts down your emergency yeah. department. So but this is just for training. We have a better the glove in the kit actually does come come up. Do they take them too? No, no. no. Um, there was some debate over taping early on in the rollout of the donning and doffing. Certain hospitals were taping. Um, this hospital has decided it gives one. It's one extra step that could cause splash and infect you. So we're we're not doing taping. The, inner level and the over that's enough protection just not to expose skin but removing the tape is quite mm -hmm. it leaves room for error all right so yeah, then, it's for <laughs> and then the, that, that the nurse that it helped you would double check there's no exposure your everything's as it should be and you'd be free to go on in and the fun part is taking it all off all right so this is it yeah so you, you go in look after your patient and then coming out you'd be into the ante room yeah um, and, and the nurse, the second nurse, would be there also through the window with the clipboard and the steps and going through it just to make sure it, uh, you're not infecting yourself. And it'd have to be a very, you know, you'd have to really take your time and take a breath because I, I suspect in the situation people would be panicking and just wanting to pull it off. But, yeah. So it really would take the two nurses. Well, Nelson, do a 360 there. There you go. <laughs> so you're stepping out of that. You. You're stepping out of that ante room, yep. and you would basically step onto a mat, and there would be a hazardous material bin. And the one we have is for the actual room is quite a bit bigger than this. <laughs> Front page next to his paper. Okay. <laughs> and you'd start the process by removing that first set of outer gloves. Yeah. <laughs> Just the outer gloves. The outer gloves. Just the Stop outer it. ones. Yep. So potentially, if this was actually a whole patient, hopefully you had them out of here before they were really floating. Because mm -hmm. you'd have all kinds of. You could. You could be covered. Yeah. 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 Come here, bull man. <laughs> so you, what you would do so is you just throw it onto your mat, you just throw gloves onto your mat, because what we're going to do at the end is we would roll that all up. <laughs> Don't. I hate the stereo. I would never. Today I'm going to have to see the headline now. Uh, there's a technique. You only have to do the outer floor, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and usually... Usually you grab it by at the wrist and oh, peel it off, so that makes it a little easier. Plus it's hard to see, even though this is clean and everything. So can you imagine practicing and starting IVs and that sort of thing? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what's yeah. this? So now there'd be Purell in the ante room. You would yeah. wash that set of inner gloves just in case you had all, at all contaminated yourself, yeah. removing the first set. Yeah, yeah. Like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you pull them off. No, no, you're not pulling those ones off yet. You have a few more things to pull off. Right. That's a very so you, tough to take yeah. That's so you, now your next step will be grabbing at the back, the cleanest part of your body, the back of your head there. Yeah. Grab that face shield and take that. And you can just drop down your mat. And then you'd cure all again because you're going up here your face. So if you have any changes, uh, Proposed from the ministry since the start of all this? You know, they, um, gave, they gave you guidelines and then they changed them? Yeah, there was just some slight changes in terms of giving you an option for goggles. Mm -hmm. yeah. Other yeah, than that, fun. for us, it's pretty much stayed the same. The only piece that they're still working on is the um, ambulance bypass protocol for rule. In Ottawa, they already have it in place where they would go to either the general. If somebody met criteria, there's no question they go either to the general or CHEO. Yeah. 